That's coming up on Friday night. Then, of course, on Saturday, it is Super Showdown. This is uh, WWE's birthday gift to me. WWE's five-hour birthday gift. It is listed on the WWE Network schedule as a five-hour show. There's no mention of a kickoff. There's no mention of a pre-show. The actual show will be five hours long. It's like the Australian WrestleMania. 5 a.m. Eastern start time for this show. And because I don't do a podcast, I will not be doing a podcast before Super Showdown because it's on Saturday. Uh, I figure, well, now would be as good a time as any to just knock out these predictions uh, a week in advance. So these are, you know, I'm doing these predictions based off all of the promotion, all of the hype up to the Sunday before. That is when I am recording this. We still have the go-home shows this week. I I suppose a lot can change. I don't know that a whole lot is going to change. It's going to change my mind on these. So let's run through the card here uh, and spit out some Super Showdown predictions. Cedric Alexander is going to defend his Cruiserweight Championship against Melbourne's own Buddy Murphy. This show is taking place from the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And so Buddy Murphy will be the, uh, the hometown boy And between that and the fact that I think Cedric has had this championship now for, God, I mean, how many months has he been champion for? Probably going back to what, WrestleMania? So he's been champion for a long time. And, you know, what I've seen of Buddy Murphy, the guy is incredible. Uh, You know, when when I do check out stuff from 205 Live, you know, he and Mustafa Ali are the two names that really jump out at me. And that's not to take anything away from Cedric. Uh, I'm still a big Cedric Alexander fan, and I think he could do well for himself even on the main roster if he ever escapes the uh, the division. I mean, right now he's he's sort of the the king of that division, so it's a good place for him to be in. But at some point, I would like to see him mixing it up with you know actual main roster talent. That being said, I think he's had a nice run, but I think now is the time to uh, to pull the trigger on a title change. And what better place for it to happen than? In Melbourne. So I'm going to go with Buddy Murphy. I think he becomes a new Cruiserweight champion. Uh, we have Asuka and Naomi against the Iconics. Speaking of uh, hometown folks, obviously uh, they also are uh, returning to their their homeland, are the Iconics. Now I thought about this. I said, what are the chances that WWE is going to put two different home, I call them hometown acts, but two different home hometown or homeland acts over on the same show? So many times we've seen people go to their home city, their home country, they lose. How many times have we seen that happen? I'm going out on a limb here by predicting the Iconics because that's expecting them to put all of the Australians over on the same show. Uh, But I'm going to go with the Iconics. The Iconics, and not just because they're in Australia, but because they need this win. Uh, The Iconics have been a massive disappointment, at least to me. They've been a massive disappointment on the main roster so far. They've done really nothing of any great note. Uh, they've sort of been, they've sort of had the same fate befall them that, that you know, befell Sanity. In that Sanity had some success in NXT. Uh, they were part of that big War Games match last year. They, there was a period where Sanity, believe it or not, was a hot act. Until they hit the main roster. And then it, and then it all came to an end. It all came crashing down. The Iconics, you know, they have their, their act that they do. Where they sort of mock everybody and they're very annoying. Uh, but... When you look at their body of work in terms of, of their, their feuds or their matches, uh, they've done nothing. They've done uh, absolutely nothing of note on the main roster. Now, I don't want them to, uh, you know, pin Asuka or anything like that. I think they could probably, uh, you know, they can get the fall on Naomi. But to give them a win, I think, on the show is, is at least some attempt to give them some credibility here. I think they need it a lot more than Asuka and Naomi do, so I'm picking the Iconics. We have the New Day defending the SmackDown Tag Team titles against The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. This could be the sleeper match on the show. Uh, Probably won't be, just because there's a lot of other... There's a lot of other big matches on this show. I'm sure they'll deliver. Uh, But this should be really good. Uh, I don't really see any reason to switch the titles off New Day just yet. Uh, If The Bar wins, great. You know, I've uh, become more of a fan of theirs. Especially, I mean, Cesaro I've always been a fan of. Uh, But... You can't go wrong with either one of these teams. I'm sure it'll be an excellent match. I'm picking New Day to retain. We have Daniel Bryan and The Miz one-on-one. The winner will earn a WWE Championship opportunity. They don't say when, only that at some point they will get a crack at the WWE title. And I've been saying this for a while, and in light of what they've done on TV, I I really have not changed my mind. I'm going to stick to what I had said probably about a month ago. 
which is that Miz wins. I think Miz wins again. This would be his second straight singles win over Daniel Bryan coming off the win at SummerSlam. Uh, and I think that Miz goes on to get a crack at the championship. They kind of split them up a little bit for a while. I think you put some distance between Miz and Bryan for a few months and you come back to it maybe for WrestleMania with Bryan challenging Miz for the championship and that is where and when Bryan wins back the WWE title. That's that's one way I would go about doing things. I don't know uh, what happens then to AJ Styles going into WrestleMania. We could always, you know, talk about that as we get closer. But I think that's how I see this shaking out. Now, how does it happen? How does it happen? Well, and I floated this idea on the show last week. I think that Randy Orton is looking for a new victim. And it ain't Ty Dillinger, despite what they did on Thursday or on oh, Thursday, on Tuesday. It ain't Ty Dillinger. Who is his next victim? Who is the next babyface? Who's the next fan favorite that he's going to go after? I think it's going to be Daniel Bryan. Could be AJ, but I think it's going to be Daniel Bryan. And I think he's not scheduled Orton for a match on this show. I think he'll be there. I think he will interfere. I think he will do something to cause Bryan the match. And because of that interference, Miz will win. And that then uh, sets off Bryan and Orton on a program together. And Miz can challenge uh, Styles, I presume Styles, at some point for the championship. We have John Cena, who has taken up residence in China. I assume he's filming some kind of movie there. Uh, but he is living in China right now. Actually, I'll tell you what, he's been posting these videos, uh, or they've been putting up videos of him on WWE's YouTube channel, of him just sort of walking around the streets of China, this particular province that he lives in. He's going through the markets, he's showing how certain foods are made, and... It's so weird because Cena's growing his hair out. You know, he kind of looks like a guy who, you know, obviously he split away from Nikki Bella. And he's sort of, I don't know, changing things up a little bit. He moved as far away from her as, as possible. And I, I've liked those videos they've been putting up. I've been very entertained and, and they're informative. And so if you haven't seen any of them, I would go on their YouTube channel and check them out. But he is leaving China. He's leaving the confines of China. To come to Australia, he'll be teaming with Bobby Lashley. They're going to be taking on Kevin Owens and Elias. Uh, this just seems like a slam dunk easy win for Cena and Lashley. Uh, hopefully Leo Rush is there. Maybe he'll get involved in some way. But uh, I'm picking Cena and Lashley. Uh, we have Becky Lynch defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair. Uh, should be good. I'm digging what they're doing with Becky. Not so much with Charlotte, but uh, I don't see them changing the title away from Becky just yet. So I think Becky retains. We have Ronda Rousey, the Raw Women's Champion, teaming up with the Bella Twins, Nikki and Brie, to take on the Riot Squad, although this match now, I guess, is in doubt, given what happened to Liv Morgan on Monday night, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. I got some things to say about that. Uh, as of right now, the match is still on. I guess if uh, Liv can't go because of her concussion, it could turn into a handicap match. Uh, my suggestion would be to get Brie Bella the hell out of there, and it could just be Ronda and Nikki, since that's probably the direction they're going in for Evolution anyway. Uh, and have just Brie, you know, be on the outside and, uh, you know, drink and chant Brie mode or whatever she does. And it could be Ronda and Nikki, you know, against uh, Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan if, if Liv can't go. Uh, but either way, I think Rousey and uh, and the Bellas get the win. Uh, I don't, you know, I thought, it well, you know, will the Bellas turn on her? Will there be some kind of miscommunication that causes them to lose? And that then leads to some, you know, bad blood between Nikki and Ronda. It could. It could, but I, you know, I don't see them eating the uh, eating the loss here. So I'm going to pick them to win. We have AJ Styles defending the WWE Championship against Samoa Joe. Uh, there, there is supposed to be a winner no matter what. So it is no DQ, no count out. There must be a winner here in this match. As much as I love what Samoa Joe has been doing, his his just his mic work overall, this this menacing personality uh, that he has had on television. He has gone off the deep end, and I just love what they're doing with him. And I believe that he absolutely could have a nice run as the WWE Champion. And there's no reason not to put the championship on him, whether it's now, whether it's later. And I know a lot of people think that Joe is walking out of Australia with the title. I just can't bring myself to believe that they're going to change the title here. I feel like, I just feel like if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. So I actually am going to stick with AJ. I think AJ Styles is going to retain the championship. They they may still have another match. Maybe they'll have a match on SmackDown 1000. Who knows? Maybe they'll do the title change there. But I just 
I don't know. I just feel like AJ is going to pull it out. I feel like he's going to retain. They're not going to put the title, at least not yet, on Joe. Could be wrong. This one, this one's a hard one to predict, but I'm going to stick with AJ. We have the Shield taking on, I guess they're calling them the Pack. Is that their name now for these guys, the Pack? I saw there was one website uh, that had a house show listing for a live event that's coming, and it's the Shield against the Pack. So I guess that's their name now. I don't know if they're a super pack or what they're supposed to be. A pack of dogs, I guess. Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. I think that what makes sense here is to give Braun Strowman, who did not win the championship at Hell in a Cell, who has yet to win the championship at all from anyone, I think you give him a little bit of a boost going into the triple threat at Crown Jewel with him and Roman and Brock Lesnar. Uh, by having him not just win for his team, but I think that Braun Strowman should pin Roman Reigns to win this match. I think he should hit the running power slam, and I think he should pin him 1-2-3, fair and square, clean as a sheet, right in the middle of the ring. It's a six-man tag. He loses nothing by being pinned. We've seen this before. I was just watching, uh, actually, what was I watching? I was watching an old uh, WWF pay-per-view. Oh, it was the uh, In Your House uh, International Incident. From July of 1996. This was the month before Vader challenged Shawn Michaels for the championship at SummerSlam. And they did a six-man tear. Remember, it was supposed to be the Ultimate Warrior teaming up with Ahmed Johnson and Shawn Michaels. And then the Warrior flaked out and got fired. And so they brought Sid back. And it was Shawn Michaels and it was Sid. And it was Ahmed Johnson against Vader and Owen and the British Bulldog. I believe that was the match. And Vader pinned Shawn Michaels to win that match. Now, why did he pin Shawn Michaels? Because A, he was the monster... He was still relatively new to the company. He was the monster. They wanted to have the monster pin the champion so that going into SummerSlam, he's got credibility and people think, well, he beat him once. He could beat him again. Same concept. This is no different. I don't care if it's 1996 or 2018. It's all the same. Some things never change. This is a very basic formula here. Braun Strowman should pin Roman Reigns. And that way he can point to having pinned him in the middle of the ring, going into Crown Jewel and make you think... He could do the same thing in Saudi Arabia, even though he won't. So I'm picking Strowman, Ziggler, and McIntyre, with Strowman pinning Roman to win the match. And then we have The Undertaker versus Triple H. Last time ever, but not really. One-on-one, -on -one, Shawn Michaels will be in Triple H's corner. Kane will uh, take a break from his mayoral duties. He will travel from Knox County all the way to Australia to be in his brother's corner for this match. You know, I will say this, they, they've done a good job of building this up and making it feel like a big match, a match going in that just felt like it was put together for no reason at all. All of a sudden, in light of this news that sounds like Shawn Michaels is going to come out of retirement and they're going to do a tag team match probably in Saudi Arabia, you know, on November 2nd, all of a sudden this match takes on a whole new meaning and it seems like a means to an end. It seems like this match is a means to get to what would be that tag team match. And so you have to think... Uh, that there's either going to be a no decision because of interference, or, I think, my prediction, is that Triple H wins. Uh, you know, they did a poll on WWE.com a couple of weeks ago. Who do you think is going to win at Super Showdown in Australia? Undertaker or Triple H? And it was some lopsided result. It was like 86-14, to 14, I think, in favor of The Undertaker. So they're not stupid. Well, most of the time. They realize that most people know going into this match, well, there's no way Triple H is going to beat The Undertaker. Of course The Undertaker is going to win. Well, now that we know it's not ending in Australia, that, again, they're trying to get to a point where they can do a tag team match, why not have Triple H beat The Undertaker? Even if it is a screw job, I don't expect them to hit a pedigree and pin him, just like that. Uh, I'm sure Shawn Michaels will be involved. Maybe there'll be a super kick involved. Didn't work at WrestleMania 28. Don't mean that it won't work here at this show if he kicks Undertaker in the face. Uh, but I'm picking Triple H to win. Uh, and that then leads into whatever it is that they're going to do at the uh, Saudi Arabia show the following month. But again, I will give them credit. The way they've, they've built this up, the Undertaker's promos, I think, have actually been better than what we've gotten from Triple H. Uh, and, you know, throwing Shawn Michaels in there, throwing Kane in there. It does add intrigue to the match. It does make me feel like, you know, we transported back to 1998 here. Uh, but, you know, look, it's 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 sort of the uh, special attraction match 
on the show. It's no different than what you would see at WrestleMania. We get that every year. There's always at least one special attraction match, right? Usually the Undertaker's match. And so they want this to to feel special. They're going to be in a stadium, 60, 70,000 people there. Uh, they want to go all out to make it special. This is one way to do that. Uh, now, I don't know if it's going to headline the show or not. I think a lot of that will probably depend on what the finish is. Maybe they want to end on a happy note. Maybe they end with, you know, they don't have a universal uh, title match. So I don't know that even without a universal title match, I still don't see them ending with a WWE championship match. I still feel like that WWE title is going to just be relegated to the second or third match, you know, from the bottom. But this is the real main event of the show. Uh, don't let anybody tell you any differently. It's been promoted as the main event. It's been built up as the main event. They're putting all their star power in this match. And I do think Triple H is going to uh, finally get one over on The Undertaker. And so that is your lineup for Super Showdown. Get stocked up on snacks. Wake up early. It's going to be a long show.